still a little early, but I'm thinking I'll get started soon. started in Moto to begin with. I'm just going to get started slowly, and if people show up, then we'll see where we're at. for joining.
need a reference images. Sorry, this is going to be really jerky, I'm sure, moving around for a while, so I apologize for that in advance, but it's just kind of having to look around at things at different angles. So Moto is, it's a polygonal modeler, I think is what it's called, which basically means that you're just working with uh, different polygons to build things. So that's what I'm going to be doing here based on some side views that I put together. Um, and uh, yeah, we'll see how it goes and maybe I'll sketch over it at the end if I get it far enough. This uh, vehicle that I'm making is a um, this series that I've been working on, and just kind of like silly make-believe uh, vehicles that are kind of like um, tanks mixed with motorcycles. And the whole thing is like, I just thought it would be cool if there was like a racing series video game like based on this. It's like, it's loosely based on the video games that I played when I was younger. And so it's just like my kind of interpretation of that, basically. It doesn't make a lot of sense, but Hopefully it just looks cool. I mean, that's the reason I like um, entertainment design is because it's all about the emotion of what you're making and like the, uh, the wow factor and you don't really have to worry about can it be produced or not because I do a lot of that in my, you know, day-to-day -day product design work. So it's just nice to be able to do something that you don't really have to be worried about how it's going to work. Looking at my reference again, um, and I'm just trying to bring the side view, top view, and my reference all together in something that kind of makes sense.
Megan, how's that um, graphic novel that you were working on? It seems like now's a good time to uh, focus on that kind of thing. Uh, no, this is Modo. This is a 3D modeling software. Um, this is like for CAD, which is computer-aided design. Um, and in video games, you would take a computer model, and that's what would be used like in the game to, uh, you know, make it look like something real. Uh, Photoshop is more of like a 2D tool. So you would make images with Photoshop, but you can make full models in 3D that can then be printed or sent to a game engine um, or sent to a like professional 3D modeler to bring into the uh, into the actual game engine, which is usually what I do because I can't build really high fidelity models. This is just for you know for sketching purposes. Hey, Michael, how are you feeling? Your quarantine's got to be uh, close to being done by now, right? Yeah, um, I think a lot of people are probably just going back to some place they feel comfortable and safe. Um, I've heard of some people, like we had friends in Chicago who um, just packed up and went down to Georgia. Um, just to stay with family because, um, I mean, if you're going to stay somewhere, you might as well stay with people you like and not be, like, stuck in a big city or something. Yeah, I'd say go for it. Um, you know, one thing that I will just suggest is that... Um, especially early on, it's good to just have something that's finished rather than perfect. Like, finished is better than perfect, I think, applies to a lot of things, but specifically to, like, creative stuff. Um, Jake Parker, who I think we've talked about in the workshop, was, I think, really fundamental in my, like, thought process for that kind of thing, because it's just, like, you want it to be as good as it is in your head, but, like, it's important to get it out of your system so, like, you can learn from, like, that experience, you know? So like definitely tune it up. There are things you definitely need to change, but like also like just try to get something like done so you can say that you finished a thing. Because I think it's better to have something that's finished and imperfect than um, you know a shelf full of unfinished but perfect ideas. Oh, that's awesome. Day 14. Good for you. <laughs> Glad to hear it.
Yeah, Michael, I don't know what your thoughts are, but the um, the first stream that I put together um, had a pretty decent number of students, and I feel like this uh, process has been working out pretty good so far. So I think we found at least a, a good stopgap until you know the workshop gets started up to uh, finish it off at least. So I feel good about that, which is nice. Thank you for doing that, Mike. So, I mean, all I'm doing right now is just um, trying to connect things, um, connect things together to make uh, the big shapes that are going to come in um, to the rest of the design. So, right now, I'm working on the big blocky body of it. This is kind of like the big primary shape that I'm trying to think about. And then when that's done, I will uh, then build out these uh, smaller pieces here. I think I'll actually start laying those in now. I'm just going to save this real quick so I don't lose it. You never know when something's going to crash, so it's always a good rule of thumb to be saving continuously. The nice thing about this program is you can be really loose and messy, and um, at the end of it you'll have something still pretty decent to look at and play with. Um, the only downside is if you're building something that you need to know the exact size of, it gets a little tricky because Modo is like really flexible. It's like working with a big ball of clay. So you can get something like it's pretty finished looking, but you know, it would be really hard to ever get it produced by like a factory or something. Uh, no, Modo is not free. It's, um, I think it's like $1,200 for a license. Um, but it's a really powerful piece of software. Uh, CAD software generally is pretty expensive. Um, there are some programs that are like $9,000, sometimes more. You know, it just all depends on what industry is using it. You know, like engineering programs for like the aerospace industry are very expensive, but then again, they have to be because of the, um, you know, how important it is to design things to tight tolerances and safety standards. Again, another reason I like video games because, you know, it just has to look and feel right. You don't have to worry about 0.2 millimeters being up in the right place or not. So all I'm doing right now is just putting these lines down um, in these polygons to try to get them to match up where I had them on my sketch. And so these pieces all start to slowly come together and hopefully you'll see them create the, uh, the skeleton of the design underneath. And then when I have a 3D model, the nice thing is that I can spin it around because what I used to do is just draw, you know, if I was designing a car for a video game, I would have to draw that car in, you know, the front view, the side view, the top view, and it would just take so much time. Um, but I taught myself how to use the software, and now I can just 
build something once and then spin it around and get all the different views that I need. Um, so it's a little more work up front, but the payoff is a lot bigger. So right now I'm just trying to drop in some of the pivot points. It's a little confusing even to me um, how all this stuff is going to fit together because I've chosen to design a fairly complicated object right now. It's basically a, a tank that has just a single tread running down the center of it, which is a very complicated thing that doesn't exist because there's probably a good reason for it not to exist, but I never stopped anybody from doing something fun. It just stops people from actually building a thing in real life. So you can see all this program is is just really simple pushing and pulling of polygons to make really simple shapes. This is going to be one of the arms that holds the, uh, the front tread down. And I want it kicked out a little bit because I don't want everything to just be going forward and backwards because I think that'll be too boring. And you can see I keep jumping from view to view because what that does is it isolates the amount of directions that I can move in because the complicated thing about 3D software is what direction do you want to move something in? Because there's three different axes, X, Y, and Z. And you only want to move one at a time generally, because that way you can keep everything straight in your head and doesn't get too complicated too quickly. So Michael, how has your uh, dog been taking to you being home 24-7? I'm sure she's been thrilled. to jump around from section to section just so I don't get bored. Um, that's the other nice thing about working in 3D is that it's, um, I don't know, it feels very meditative to me. If anybody's ever like done something like build Legos as a kid or, I don't know, build um, like car models for fun, like it's very similar. It's like you know what it's going to look like at the end and you're just like putting pieces together or connecting points to get to that thing that's already like, you know, defined, like the thing I'm aiming for is right there. And so there's not a lot of, I mean, there's obviously a decent amount of creativity happening, but it's not a lot of problem solving really happening, which is nice um, to create something without having to solve a problem, which is what a lot of design is. And that's why it can also become a little bit um, mentally taxing. And so right now I'm just going to delete half of it because I was working on one half without the other. And so that will get mixed up. Okay, I think we're back on track. There. Now I've got both sides selected. I think this actually 
actually needs to be pulled back a bit. The other thing is like being honest about being able to change things. You don't want to stick too close to your drawing if your drawing is incorrect because it's really easy to draw yourself into a corner because you can draw things in 2D that are impossible to actually make in 3D. And so you have to be really careful about that. See, I, I'm just going outside the line a little bit because it was just getting very confusing in my head. That looks better. Now I can get back to doing this kind of wing shape that I kind of pulled from like um, like military helicopters is kind of what I had in my head. And then um, I'm going to pull that out of the side, and that's what's going to hold some of the weapons of this vehicle. Um, for anybody watching this, is anybody else working on any like little side projects that they've been avoiding but now are kind of faced with no reason not to do it? I guess that's one of those small silver linings that comes from something like this. So now I can grab, see, it stopped doing it again. Work. Yeah, okay. I think we're okay. Uh, nope, I can see we missed a few. Now I can grab these, and you can see that there's this like protrusion coming out of the side. So now all we have to do is pull. And then you just shape it a little bit. Now, if you get good enough with a 3D modeling program, there's nothing you can't build, which is, you know, really exciting. Especially if you want to just play around and do kind of like silly futuristic vehicles, because you don't have to worry about them ever actually working. And you don't have to just build what you can buy on like a Lego set, which is also really nice. Yeah, I like how that looks. I think I want to push in a little flat spot up here for like some kind of weapon bay. Like if there was like a missile pod or something that fit on here. Yeah, that's kind of a cool shape too. I just like, I mean, I'm thinking about the whole design of this object as I'm going along, and it kind of helps that a lot of my personal design preferences are like very chunky and um, angular. And so if I was doing like something really organic, this would take longer, but it's okay that all these boxes are so rough um, and there's so many hard edges because like, you know, doing something like a military vehicle, it's already kind of in that neighborhood. You know, a tank is like a very hard edged brutal thing. And so if you're designing something using the tools that already builds kind of those shapes is kind of a nice shortcut. Yeah, it's kind of getting there. I'm noticing that it comes up in the front a little bit there, so I need to find some way to connect this so I can put a nice little crease on the front. Because I want it to look kind of like angry. It's got eyebrows or something. Yeah, 
Yeah, that's good to hear, Genevieve. Like I said before, um, just get on YouTube and search for uh, perspective drawing tutorials. That's a great way to start, especially for uh, interior design. A lot of the reason they're angular is for um, like radar signature, but also like if you think about the things that are attacking them, like rockets, you want these shapes that allow things to just bounce off and fly away. You don't want any pockets that something could get stuck inside and explode. Oh, hey Nick, thanks for uh, tuning in. What have you been up to? I'm going to drop some more pivots in here because I'm having a hard time seeing some of these things that are happening. I've kind of um, decided to make some pretty complicated engineering decisions about how this thing works. So for that to make sense, I'm going to have to drop in a lot of um, a lot of shapes that to the average viewer will look like, oh yeah, um, I don't understand how that works, but obviously somebody took the time to engineer it. And so... My thought process with that is like I've always tried to be interested in like um, mechanic, mechanical objects, you know, like I like working on cars and motorcycles and like just that mechanical understanding will allow me to make things that to the general person will be like, oh yeah, that looks like it works. That's been kind of the niche that I've been trying to focus on for myself in the entertainment design world is just like making believable functional um, vehicles and like hard surface things like weapons and stuff you pick up in the game that like, you know, opens up or retracts in some like cool way. Do you think it's funny, Megan, but a lot of this stuff, like a lot of the things that we design around us, like a lot of cars are designed to look a certain way, like either angry or, um, I don't know, angry is generally the easiest thing to do because you just do like really angular pointy shapes and it makes a car, you know, like the, like the Mustang, for instance, like muscle cars in general usually have part of the hood covering the headlights and that like kind of sends a, a message to your brain like when somebody like squints their eyes when they're angry or like an animal does that it kind of gives you the same like vibe and so it's like sending all these subliminal or subconscious cues through um, something that doesn't necessarily have like any kind of emotional state and that's a fun thing about design is that you can impart an emotion on an inanimate object which is like kind of a weird thing to consider <clears throat> okay, this part's going to be very complicated, I can already tell. I'm going to break it up just because of that. Every time I want to make a surface change, I'm going to put an intersection there because that allows me to move lines around like this. I can just slide this line down and you can see it fits that line that I created earlier. 
So it takes a little bit of planning ahead, but once you start doing it, it kind of becomes like second nature. And I'm just getting rid of parts that I don't need anymore. So like designing things like this, like right now I'm thinking about like my motorcycle, um, like swing arm, and like I know the shapes that are involved there. And so I just need to take enough of the um, design language from like something that exists in the real world and then apply it to something that's like really wild and crazy. That's why the Millennium Falcon had like, you know, a windshield, you know, and a radar dish. Like those things were important, you know, for scale, but also so you could understand that it was like something made by human beings and not something made by like an alien race. I think that looks okay. This piece is now kind of distracting, so I'm just going to hide it for a while. I'll bring it back later. for a second and readjust. Okay, that's what the problem was. I've got a little guy hiding right there. So these are called vertex vertices. Um, a vertex or vertices in the plural, I think. I could be wrong. Um, but each corner of a polygon has a vertice, and that's basically what you grab and move around if you want to affect the polygons. So I'm actually going to cut these out now. And add some thickness to this too now. Yeah, this is going to be the rear swing arm of the tank. This one is less complicated because you can see in the image, the one in the back just has to go, like, there's, it's got to rotate right here. So if it hits something, it can bounce up and down. But the one in the front's more complicated because it has to turn. Um, and the way a motorcycle wheel turns is already very complicated because it, it uses actually a gyroscopic effect to turn the wheel. That's what... Um, um, counter steering is called. So when you're riding a motorcycle, you actually push in the opposite direction you want to go, and the bike falls in the opposite direction while you're turning. And it's really complicated until you get on the bike and just feel it, and it feels right. And after that, your brain is kind of able to start making those connections. Um, but before that, as a concept, it seems very strange. And so um, a lot of the, I don't know, it's not a lot, because this is just like a few sketches I've been doing, but some of the criticism I've gotten of these, is like, oh, how do they turn? It's like, it doesn't really matter um, right now to explain how they turn. Once they're animated, they'll either look right and people will be like, oh yeah, okay, that makes sense, and stop thinking about it, or I'll have to make some adjustments to how I design these things. Um, and I think for now, the way they, they turn, I have enough an idea in my head that I will be able to convince other people of it. So I just kind of have to like get there and have a final product to show people, and then hopefully that clears it up. So right now I'm just kind of smoothing out different parts of this. And now 
I want that. I want that part back. There we go. Okay, I don't really know what this does. I know it's in that. Uh, I kind of changed it in my sketch. Okay, maybe I'll go back to the original here, which is actually just part of a cylinder, which is a little easier to deal with. up this early on, I think it's pretty normal to um, delete things away and kind of modify as you go because I don't really know what the best solution is right now. So even though I'm building something that I've already decided to revise, like in the moment, I want to leave, my, leave myself enough of a gap to continue to improve it if I can see something that looks better in the moment. So right now I'm kind of half looking at my side view and half looking up here. So I've got that flat spot. And now go out and I just make levels on top of levels on top of levels. Yeah, I mean that's kind of cool looking. And having something round, it will be a nice way to offset all these other angular shapes, I think. You know, and as I get further away from um, the um, original circle, I can see it's kind of getting out of whack. So I've got to make a few adjustments here to make sure it all seems like the same levels keep happening. Because so it starts to look inconsistent, um, it'll look really silly really quickly. Because when you're building something like a hard surface object, um, like this, the background of all these things that everyone just understands but doesn't really think about is that these have to be produced like in a factory somewhere. So like in this imaginary world, this vehicle is built somewhere. And when things are built uh, in a factory, like a car or something, there are just certain shapes that you don't see. Like there's no weird, like thick to thin, thick to thin shapes on like a manufactured vehicle. And the reason for that is, I mean, it's, it's numerous. Like one reason is it looks shitty, but two, um, inconsistent shapes are very hard to make um, in like production. It's much easier to have two parallel lines than two kind of squiggly lines that follow each other. Um, and so this angular stuff needs to be supported by um, like consistency. You know, like the thickness on this front swing arm has to slowly get smaller or slowly get bigger. Like this one right here, I really like this shape, what's happening back here. I want to get more of that into the rest of the design. This is kind of like my key area. It's really helpful if you can find something that you can just like key in on and like, this is the design language of my, you know, shapes that I'm going for. And then you can more easily replicate it throughout the rest of the vehicle if you have something solid to kind of base all your decisions off of. Yeah, I like the way this looks. So you can see slotting that in there fits kind of what my intention was up there. I think I need to end it sooner though. Yeah, that's better. Yeah, that feels good. Uh, things are these things are coming together now for me. It's also helpful to be like excited by what you're working on. Like it can be kind of a slog if what you're working on is I don't know, it just doesn't feel right or it's uninteresting to you. So I don't know, these personal projects, I think it's really important to pick something you're like really passionate about. I'm trying to decide if I want this one to be smaller, this axle to be smaller than the one in the front. Traditionally, the rear wheel is bigger because it gives a sense of direction. So I think I'm actually going to make this bigger than what I have drawn. And that means I'm going to have to adjust these guys a little bit because the angle won't be right anymore. But that is OK. Uh, maybe the angle will be all right. 
Yeah, I think that'll be okay. I think the next thing I want to put in are the treads. Like that's the next like really big thing that's missing right now that I think will make this start to feel more realistic. So I'm going to put that on a different layer because all these lines are getting a little bit confusing. I've got a few ideas for how I can build this, but I'm not sure they make sense. So there might be a little trial and error happening here. So this part, the other thing that I like about putting these things on really round treads that look like elongated tires is that it's a nice offset to like the rest of the design. Because right now, everything is super angular. And um, it's kind of like a question of contrast. It's like spicy things taste spicier if you have like a sweet component to add to it. Um, because it's like the opposite of the taste. And so like if you offset like the thing you're aiming for. So in this case, I'm aiming for something angular. So if you have a few points that are very soft or very round, is more accurate to say, then um, it will make the angular th things look even more angular because they're in opposition to something else. You know, everything needs to be in balance. Even if um, you've got one strong point of view, in this case, like an angular military vehicle, like those small points of balance are going to be super helpful in selling this design as something that's like believable and real. I'm trying to think of the best way to build this because this can get really complicated really quickly. Because it's a circle, everything rows from the center, but because I've cut it in half, I think I might have lost that. Yeah, see, it doesn't grow in the right way, so I'm just going to go back a little bit. Because what I want to get is this feeling of a, a motorcycle tire, which is super round in section, and I need to do that now before I cut this circle up. Now I can start shrinking these things down. Yeah, that starts to feel a lot better. So now it looks like a tire, like a motorcycle tire, which is super round on the bottom. And the contact patch is actually going to be really small, but that's okay. Because that is how they are in reality. And I hit that line perfectly, which I didn't even plan for. So it works out great. Just like that loop like that loop and then I can just grab everything in between. I'm really happy that just worked because usually when I say something like that, I, I don't know, it just doesn't seem like it works as easily. There we go. Now we've got a tread starting to come together. Um, I think what I want to do is also like, so I've got some reference pulled up here, and I was thinking about it. I think what I want to do is actually have like, I don't know, this one, okay, maybe not. This one's pulled very straight and tight, and I was just thinking that it would be good to push this up a little bit so it looks softer, but I don't know if that'll look maybe on this one. No, this one's really straight too, so I guess I was wrong. My thought was that there'd be some like, slack in that line, but I think it's pretty taut, actually, so I'm just going to leave this as is for now. So now I'm giving these lines thickness, and this is going to be tough because you can see that it's already starting to misalign itself. 
So this is where like Modo is really good because I can just do this kind of by eyeballing it. But I guarantee you, none of these lines are parallel now, which is a little bit of a problem. But for what I'm doing right now with this illustration, it's not really going to bug me. So now I'm going to grab both sides and fill this thing in. There we go. So the other thing in a tread, if um, if you look at, I can't see it there. So the tread has got to be held in by gears. I'm trying to find a good one. I'm not sure I have one up and ready. Doesn't really matter. Um, so all these gears spin this tread around, and they've got teeth in each one of these. So it's like a wheel with a bunch of spokes sticking out. And so they got to have something to grab into. And so on this tread, I want this to be like a um, like a really malleable but strong, some, some kind of weird synthetic that's like half rubber and half metal. Because it needs to be strong enough to hold up the whole tank, but it needs to be malleable that it can um, move um, in a really agile way, like I imagine this vehicle being able to move. So I'm just adding more polygons here. So I'm going to adjust all these in a little bit and actually make it look like tread, hopefully. Um, but I want to build that centerpiece in here first. they're all going to be geared down the center. I think that'll be cooler looking. And then I'll just have gears in the middle because the tank has them on the outside, but since this is centrally located, it will just be right down the middle. There we go. And I want, actually, And do that one more time. And now I can go in and pick every other one. And the nice thing about Modo is that once you set up a a plan for what things you're grabbing, you saw that the program is picking every other polygon, and I didn't actually have to go around and select every one, which is really useful and saves a lot of time. Now I can make teeth. Yeah, that's pretty cool looking. I think that works. And then the other thing I need to do, like, so this is going to be too complicated. I'm sure I could figure out how to build that, but because I'm going to be sketching over this 3D model, I'm going to be able to draw that in Photoshop a lot quicker than I could if I was modeling it. And so that's another thing that I'm making decisions on, like, moment to moment. It's like, is this something that's easier for me to do in Photoshop or easier to do in 3D? And doing this kind of tread is going to be way too difficult. So I'm just going to go in and give myself a couple of points that um, set this thing off so I can tell when the repetition is happening. So I'm going to do it every five. So that's one, one, two, three, four, four five. So, so now it picks every fifth part. Oh, but it's not mirrored. So now I have to do that over again. Oh, you know what? I should pick every sixth because there's a gap here and that's going to bother me later. One, two, three. I'll try that one. No, that was wrong too. So I guess five is as good as I'm going to get. So I'm off by one polygon, but again, this is like such a small issue that hopefully it won't really, I mean, it's going to bug me at some point, but right now, I will just let it slide. So, yeah, that's kind of interesting looking, like getting that edge. So you can see that like all the way around, it's got that same, it kind of looks like a weird bug shell shape, which I don't know if that's a bad thing or a good thing right now. Huh. 
I'm not really sure if I like that or not. I don't know, it's kind of cool. It looks it looks kind of edgy and rough, which is good. Yeah, I don't know, I think I'll leave it. I'll leave it. Okay, the other thing I want to do is put some gaps in this to make it look like um, like tire tread. So I'm going to cut all of these into the face now. Uh, actually, you know what? I don't want that middle one because I want to split it into thirds. I just think that'll be a better balance. So I'm just going to do these two outer ones. Yeah, cut those in. I think that looks better. Because the other thing is, so if you imagine like um, this tire rotating over, like I don't want to have too many cuts in here because it cuts down on the surface area. Yeah, I think that looks pretty cool. Like this part's really important because that's one of the main parts of like the actual vehicle design, so I need these to like look extra cool. Like it's definitely one of the main um, kind of selling points in the game, or the, the vehicle, I should say. So again, I'm just gonna go through, get myself these points. Oh, shoot. I'm not sure how to select. I think that'll be okay. Yeah, I'm, start, I'm liking those more and more the more I look at them. So I'm just going to do a few more like detail things, and then I'll just be able to duplicate this for the back, which will be really nice. So I'm just adding detail where I know that I'm going to want, like, See all these lines, how consistent and straight they are? That's going to be a really hard thing to um, to sketch in Photoshop, like to get things lined up the right way. Okay, so we've got our tread. I'm going to leave it on the flare for now. I'm going to rename this. I want this to rotate around the center axle that I've defined. So now, since I built it like straight forwards and backwards, now I can like move it into place and it's already lined up. Yeah, that looks pretty good. I think what I'm looking at up here on this illustration that I did, I think it needs to be wider though, so I'm just going to fatten it up a little bit. Yeah, that feels better. Yeah, and it fits pretty well with my uh, original sketch, which I feel good about. modify this one slightly because I wanted the axle in the back to be wider so this whole thing needs to grow a little bit. because I want to make this end shrink down a little bit. Let's see. What would be smart? Maybe I can just delete out a section of it because I want the front to be longer. And the back. I want the front to be long and skinny and the back to be kind of thick and short. I guess I can just delete some out. I 
delete out that section and the one right above it. Hopefully this works. I think this will work, but I am really uncertain at the moment. Hopefully these can kind of connect up. I think this would be like a close enough situation. I don't want to mess with this too much. So these are two technically separate parts, but in the illustration, I'm betting no one will be able to tell. I'm bringing this back to my original layer, and now we can organize this. So I can tell I'm going to have to shorten this up quite a bit more, because it goes way too far into the body than I would like it to. Eh, maybe that's okay though, I don't know, let's see. kind of intersecting in a weird place with this. Oh, it's getting there though. Let me um, let's see what it looks like in a quick render. So the other nice thing about Modo is that you can have a little render window open. And as you're building, let's put it up here in the corner. As you're building, you can watch this thing update itself. So you can see that's my 3D model, and there's my little sketch up there, and it's already looking, you know, relatively similar, which I'm pretty happy about. Uh, let's put a floor down because we need. I want to see like what the shadows look like. real quick so the background is white. Yeah. Now you can see it better. I'm going to change my light source very quickly. The light source would be really important to see, um, you know, all of the different like angles and the shapes that I'm creating. And so I want the light source to be similar to what I sketched out because depending on like what kind of shapes I make, they're going to cast different shadows, and I want those shadows to be similar to what I meant to build based on the sketch right there. So yeah, it's already looking pretty similar. Um, the thing about the sketch is like it's kind of bent over, and, like the thing is turning. I was trying to draw it on its side, so there's going to be a little bit of changes here because of that, um, but I don't really care at the moment, so I think we're okay. Okay, next steps. Um, I really want to start getting into the details, like I need the suspension to get in here now. Um, I'm going to hide this down here. I'm just going to start labeling things so I don't confuse myself because nobody needs to watch me flail around picking layers. You know what, I'm also going to put the uh, the barrel in real quick, so that's a pretty significant part of the overall design, that front cannon. And the nice thing is, as I'm working, you can see all of the changes get updated in this little render window. Okay. 
I think the next time I do one of these videos, I will um, record it ahead of time for the modeling part because like this stuff is a lot more fun to watch. I feel like when uh, it's sped up like three or four times, it's almost like, um, I don't know, it's like watching a time lapse of like a plant grow or something. It's like, it's really trippy and kind of fun to watch because like all of a sudden these things just grow out of nothing. Um, the downside to that, obviously, is that it happens so fast. If you're trying to learn, like, how somebody actually builds something, that can be a little problematic. But I'm just doing this for fun, so I figured this time around, at least, I would just do it the way I'm doing it now. But we'll see. You guys can let me know if this is painfully boring or boring but interesting. Yeah, that's pretty cool looking, I think. This thing is very wide left to right, so I want the um, the front of the cannon to feel like that too. centered on the barrel. And then you just start adding in lines so you can start cutting into the shape. I mean, you can see I keep just duplicating the same like two or three um, tasks over and over again. Maybe a little wide. Yeah, that looks better. I am on board with that. I'm just going to hollow this out real quick. I also want to put this weird, like, I don't know what that is, these, these little arrows up top, this flat thing, I don't know if it's some kind of radar dish or like just part of the frame, but I think that's a pretty important part of the design, so I'm going to drop that in real quick. this weird little fin in the front, and then I will get back to doing the suspension. Yeah, there we go. It's starting to feel very similar to my sketch, actually. Like, very weird and alien, which is also good. Okay, back to what I had planned on starting, which is the suspension, which is going to be pretty complicated, because I've got to put in all of these like, tubes and stuff, these shapes, so... So I'll just start. Um, this first part is probably the most important part. 
important part. These are the shocks. This is what's going to like hold up the weight of this giant vehicle. So they have to be really chunky and strong looking. So I'm going to go for like another half hour and see how far I get and give myself half an hour at the end to do some Photoshop over the top just to fill in some things. Okay, so here's the base. It's a little wide right now. So basically, again, this kind of part that I'm adding to, like I put shocks on just about every vehicle that I do. These shock absorbers are on every car on the road. Um, like anything basically that moves over the land that needs to bounce a little bit. Um, and just again, having like a rudimentary understanding of how these things work allows me to just kind of put something together that everybody looks at and just, you know, kind of nods their head along like, oh yeah, that kind of makes sense. Um, but this all comes from like a pretty long history of like doing studies and, you know, reading and watching videos about how this kind of stuff works. Um, because you just need to know enough about it to convince somebody else that it works. It's a really gray area where that is though, because all it takes is one person that knows more than you to point out something that you did wrong, which is a really good argument to always surround yourself with people that are smarter than you because when you need help, you know who to go to. I've got half a dozen friends that are all smarter than me about things that I'm interested in and it's great because, you know, instead of going to Google, you just ask your friend like, hey, how do I build a computer? And if you've got a good enough friend, they send you links. And then you have a computer days later. I'm just trying to get these angles right because I want them to be very like stacked, like 45 degrees on top of each other. And then I'm going to cut this in, I think. Because I want this piece to look like it sits inside that. Oh, I know what to do. that, and now I can make this look like it's smaller. There, now it looks like it's coming out of that, which is what I want. I want that piece to look like it drops up and down in the inside. What's my sketch look like again? Okay. Yeah, it's getting there. These things are a little bit, I don't know, it's just all this detail stuff. It depends on how important it is, if you should add it or not. And it's just like a seat of the pants decision whether it's worth adding in. Because so much of this stuff could be, you know, photo bashed in or um, you could use kit bashes, which is like a kit bash model is like, a 3D model that you make based on other people's models, because like you can get on a a 3D website like Turbo Squid, and I could have probably grabbed a whole bunch of like different pieces of um, like a, a truck suspension, and I could have just used that to put all these things together and save myself some time, which I think is honestly probably the smarter way to do it. But um, I don't know. I don't do a lot of 3D modeling, so I end up making everything from scratch most of the time. But if you have access to it, I think it's a smart thing to do. 
use somebody else's hard work. You just got to be careful about making sure you give them credit or adjusting the design enough that it no longer resembles what they had done. I wish there was a way to align these things. I'm sure there is, I just don't know it. But I just want them to all be directly on top of each other. The other nice thing about Moto is once you put one part down, you can kind of just use it to spawn a whole bunch of like secondary parts. So this circle is allowing me to just pull a piece off of it, and now I'm making the bracket that it connects to. duplicate parts in here somewhere. So the downside of 3D modeling is if you hit the wrong button once, you end up doubling like everything that's on screen, but you don't realize it because it's literally sharing the same space um, as what you can see. So I've got like copies on top of my original, and that's what was giving me those weird, there we go, see, so not so messy anymore. Much better. You just build it once, and then you can duplicate it over. And I want to rotate these actually because they are pointed in the wrong direction. It's nice to just have the sketch up here because I keep going back to it to remind myself what all these shapes need to do. Mirror it 
because I just, I don't know, it's easier for me to think when things are mirrored. I'm trying to think of like motorcycle forks, like they need to be, I don't want to kick the bottom of the top out, so I think I either need to make the top wider or the bottom skinnier, and I think I can probably do a little bit of both to solve this. bring the swing arm in just a little bit, which that works. And then I'm going to make this outer body just a little bit wider. And hopefully it doesn't mess up too much stuff. Actually, you know what I can do? I can just grab this loop that I made earlier, and that should pull all these surfaces out a bit. Yeah, there we go. Shift up. I just selected all the surfaces that were one away from my selection, so now. And I should probably grab all of these. Because this whole wing is going to have to come with. Okay, now we can pull this whole thing out a little bit. Yeah, that's better. I'm just moving these things around so they don't intersect anymore. Because that's the other thing about working in 3D is it shows me where all of my um, mistakes in my drawing were. So like a lot of the stuff in my drawing, like this made sense, but now that I'm in 3D, I can see that I, you know, was lying a little bit about what was possible. So I'm just going to delete these parts out. And then I will build them back in in a sec. I think I want it to be flatter in the front, because, yeah, this looks really flat to me. So I made it wider, and that's actually going to work in my favor, because now I can make the front a little more imposing and blocky. Yeah, that works. And I want to make it look like these eyes are on there, kind of, and I'm trying to figure out what kind of shape that is.
know, and I want this centerpiece to articulate. And what that means is there's got to be a pivot right here so the front can kind of like swivel back and forth. And I'm unsure how to do that, but I'm just going to follow my line drawing and hopefully I can find a solution that way. Following the shapes that I made, which is kind of messy. I know this this piece right here. I can tell is not happy. You can just tell sometimes that some of these polygons have just been like stretched to their absolute limit and are just done. You have to be sensitive to them. Um, in case anybody wants um, some references for other people to watch that do this kind of work, um, I learned everything I know in Modo um, from Vaughn Ling. He uh, goes by Heavy Poly online. Um, he is like awesome. Like he's got a ton of tutorials for this. If anybody's interested in ever getting better at Modo, like he's definitely the place to start. He's got tutorial videos like like really early stuff and then more complicated stuff and got other programs too that he specializes in. Vaughn is just a super talented guy and he's really nice too. There's a hard but important combo to find and people you want to learn from. Okay, I need to build a really simple pivot right there and I think I have some reference for what I want that to look like. So this is the kind of articulation I'm talking about. I need to make that believable. I think I'm going to use two of these because I've already made them. This is the other nice thing is when you do start to build in your details, um, all of these parts can be reused over and over again. And especially when it comes to like building something that's meant to be manufactured, like, you know, if you think about a car, they don't use a different kind of bolt for every single part. Wherever they can, they try to reuse the same part because it's more efficient. So duplicating parts over and over again can give your designs like a, a sense of believability that they wouldn't have otherwise. Yeah, Vaughn's really good, and he um, he actually is doing even more than just 3D modeling. He actually designed his own painting software, which, again, anybody who's got some time on their hands, I would really suggest downloading. It's free for iOS and Android and PC. Um, it's called Heavy Paint, and it's so much fun to use. Um, I've been doing, if you get on my Instagram, which is just my name, Ian underscore Galvin, you can see some of the things that I've done using his painting software and it's just like so easy to use so much fun like I can't recommend it enough he's so talented that he just like builds his own computer program on the side when he's bored it's crazy so that shape you can see it was kind of up there I want to make sure that I was getting it in there because I think that's going to be important for the um, for the paint over. So I'm just kind of making silly shapes now because I'm speeding up a little bit because um, I just want to really have things blocked in that I can reference. So 
So you can see that starts to look like that piece, which I'm pretty happy about. Still a decent amount of weirdness happening in the middle, which I'm really not liking. But there's only so much I can do in the time that I've given myself, so I will try to make it work. Yeah, Vaughn is one of the more talented humans I've come in contact with. He can do just about anything, and he's worked on some really cool projects, too. He's an entertainment designer. Um, he worked on Into the Spider-Verse, which is, like, one of my all-time favorite movies. He's worked on the Tron animated series. Um, Vaughn has worked on a lot of stuff. He's super talented. Vehicles are definitely what I specialize in. Um, you know, that's kind of like what I was talking about before. Um, just finding a niche for yourself and focusing on it. Um, before I had an entertainment design portfolio, I just put together like what I really like doing, which was a series of flying motorcycles, and that led to my first um, entertainment design um gig with a, a mobile gaming company for like a racing motorcycle game so I think for anybody who's trying to put a portfolio together like I think it makes more sense to design what you're passionate about as opposed to like designing what you think other people are going to want to see because if you design something you really care about people who need that kind of design work will eventually find you um, as opposed to say like you know I feel like a lot of companies need somebody who can design I don't know, boats right now. Like, I feel like boats are very popular. Like, if that's not what you care about, don't take the time to design something for it. Um, you know, design what you care about, and hopefully the people in the world that need that kind of thing designed will then find you because you've gotten good enough at it. So, yeah, vehicles are definitely, for me, the thing I enjoy doing the most. This doesn't have anything to land on, and that was just really bugging me as I was looking at it, so I'm just going to kick this out. Yeah, that looks better at least. Merging some of these things to like simplify them because this is the part of the design I really want to look right. There, so now it's got a flat spot that it can land on. But I don't like that I keep forgetting to mirror everything. Um, 
the last thing I'm going to do is just put some cylinders in here that look like rockets because you can see up there I decided that this is going to be like some kind of rocket pod. Duplicating things like this um, is also really important for doing it in 3D because this is so much easier to do here than it would be in Photoshop to like make sure all of these like circles line up and just be a pain. symmetrical because I feel like it makes the design boring so I'm going to add just a little bit of asymmetricality to it. This will be like some like sensor because it's I think these are all unmanned vehicles like there's no place for the human to sit in it and they're really big too um, so I want this to feel like something massive and um, if it is truly a like remote controlled or autonomous vehicle, it's got to have all these sensor pods all over it. You know, like a drone, basically. Which are also very cool and fun to do for like sci-fi stuff. Because if you design something that doesn't have a person in it, all of a sudden it can go like you know, much faster than a human being could, like, survive, or it can, like, go in and, like, blow something up because you don't have to worry about the person driving it. And then I should be able to just steal some parts to finish this rocket pod. necessarily, but it does need to be held on by something. There we go. Okay. Um, 
Now, I'm just going to do a quick render of this thing and we'll see what we've got. And I'll bring it into Photoshop and see what I can do in half an hour. I don't know, I feel like I spent... Obviously we're not going to do the back because there's a bunch of holes left over. I want to do a relatively simple view. Maybe something like this. Just a top-down view. Um, I'm not going to add any shaders or anything to this because I'm just going to add more time. Um, I'm going to make it a little darker though just so I can see. See what's going on a little bit better. And then it's double sided, it makes everything on the inside look darker. Yeah, it looks okay. Um, the last thing I need to do is decide with my camera if I want to change the perspective because I can make it look like a crazy, like zoomed in perspective, but I don't know, that makes things look weird. I usually like to use a really wide perspective. It just simplifies everything. Oh, you know what? I'm going to bring in... So this is another file I was working on before. I'm going to bring in this character. Yeah. Because I want a human scale reference. So this is how big this thing is. It's really helpful to have like um, just a little human figure in here for scale. Um, I don't want him interfering with it though, so I'm just going to set him yeah, like over there. Yeah, that feels okay. The floor, I want to be bigger because I can see the edge of it. Okay, now I just have to pick, like I said before, I think like some kind of angle like that would be kind of cool. Yeah, I think this will work. Um, I'm looking at it and I think I just want to make that tread a little bit wider, both in the front and the back, because it looks a little, oh yeah, especially the back, that looks way too skinny. Uh, that's going to look a lot meatier in the rendering. Same with this. Because it'll still turn, it's just like, it, just, it doesn't need as narrow a track as what I had created. So now I can just hit render. And then hopefully, yeah, check it out. We're most of the way there. So I've got that one. I'm going to save that image. Moto tanks. Just call this A1. I usually save them as PNG files. And I'm going to save one more just to the rear view. Actually, this would be kind of cool to do it like in the game view. Like this is like the view you would see if you were playing it. Um, I'm going to make this floor white. Oh, that didn't work. There we go. Out real quick. That's like the view you would see if you were playing the game. And then let's just do a real quick rear view. Cool. So you can see that, like, because I built this really simple model in about an hour and a half that I have multiple images that I can now sketch on top of, and it will save me a ton of time trying to figure this out. Okay, uh, I am going to swap to 
my Photoshop screen. Hopefully everybody can see that okay. And create a new Photoshop file. Can everybody see me opening the Photoshop file at the moment? Let me know. This is my first time switching between screens while streaming, so it could get a little wonky, possibly. Okay, here we go. Now, I'm going to do a quick sketch over. Very quick, because it's already 7.39, and I said I'd go until eight or so, but if we go a little bit over, I think we'll be fine. So I've got the sketch up here for reference. Sorry, one second, I'm just gonna turn the lights on in here. The sun has gone down since I started this rendering. reference up here. It's my game view down here. And my rear view. And the main one. So anybody who sat in any of the Western workshops um, probably knows like some of these keys that I'm using and like dropping groups into layers. Um, but if anybody has any Photoshop questions as I'm doing this stuff, uh, let me know. Um, some of these things will probably happen pretty quickly because I want to just start sketching on this. And so if I skip over any details, just put it in the chat and I'll try to get to it. I'm gonna put this over here. I just want to have these other views here so I can kind of like think about what these objects would look like as I'm drawing the front view. I'm just kind of for reference. And it's nice seeing it all at once. So, I mean, you can hopefully see that like 90% of that sketch is here now. Um, and it's going to make my life a lot easier because everything is lined up perfectly in perspective. That's the stuff, especially with like vehicles and things, that's really difficult initially to get right. So now I get to just start trying. Let me just move some windows around so I can reference some things. So on my other screens, I'm just pulling up my reference images so I have something to look at while I'm drawing because like, you know, most of the time I can fill in the blanks when I have a 3D model like this, but I also want to be true to the original sketch and I also want to draw in some like cool details like the, um, those articulations that I was talking about earlier. nice having multiple monitors because you can it's basically like pinning things up like on a, a whiteboard to draw off of um, and so these paintings become like half sketch and half just like study because I'm just looking at like tanks and um, you know other similar vehicles for reference and like this part is just it's very easy and fun because all I'm really doing is sketching over the top of um, what I've modeled, but when I pull the model away, it's going to look like I just drew this perfectly the first time, um, which is just, I don't know, it's a really great kind of shortcut. This is that sensor pot I was talking about, so, you know, it's got to look kind of high tech.
like there's all these different kinds of like um, thermal imaging cameras and like telescopes, whatever else a drone needs to find its target. Um, if I get a little quiet while I'm doing this stuff, it's just making these decisions is also really difficult um, while talking, so feel free to just pepper me with questions if there are any as I go through this stuff. Um, this part I kind of wish I had modeled more in 3D, because see how it's got all these cool like um, triangular shapes? Oh, I also forgot the sensor pod up there, which I kind of like. And there's like some cool headlights and stuff happening up here. I want to get that in as well. You know, and all this stuff is um, referenced from like attack helicopters and, um, you know, tanks. It's just like finding the right details to bring over to make what you're working on seem believable and exciting. I know this part actually is like probably my favorite because this is when you can really go into autopilot and just fill in the blanks of um, of what you've built. Um, and when you pull away the 3D model, it just looks like you have this amazingly tight um, line drawn that would have taken hours to like line up. Um, if anybody watched the last stream that I did for the Western course, um, it was a perspective interior drawing. And I had to build a grid, and like I was really struggling for a little while to get um, all the elements to work together because everything needs to work in the same perspective plane, and if it doesn't, it's obvious like immediately. And so being able to work off of something like this is just so rewarding. Um, and at first, it kind of feels like cheating because it's like I'm just I'm kind of tracing my own work, but because it's my own work, uh, it's not cheating. You know, it's just uh, it's using the tools that you have available to you. Um, and if anybody wants to like try this workflow, um, I would actually suggest like downloading SketchUp um, because that is free, and there are a ton of tutorials how to use it online. And I know a lot of um, entertainment designers that actually just use SketchUp for um, their production projects. Like the last Star Wars movie, there were a handful of entertainment designers that do all of their modeling in SketchUp, which is really mind-blowing that the free software and these guys are putting together um, assets that are going into, you know, a AAA franchise, which is just mind-boggling that they're using a free tool, because that was not the case, you know, a decade ago. It's a free tool that anybody, if they cared enough, could teach themselves. It's just a very exciting time to be doing creative work because there's so much of it being shared right now. Um, so this is the muzzle on the end of the... Um, I really like what I designed in my sketch, so I'm going to try to do that. It's like this caved-in shape. I haven't, um, I haven't used it in a long time um, because I have kind of a workflow that works for me, but I would really like to get back to it. Um, my wife and I play with the idea of building our own house occasionally, and it, I would just be really excited if um, she could like art direct and I could like build it and sketch up because you can do it with like a, a floor plan and um, build it like to scale, which would be really fun to do. The nice thing about SketchUp is you can render out like actual views, like as a person would see a room if you were standing inside of it, and I just feel like that's such a great tool to use. Yeah, 
this is definitely my favorite part because I can just kind of um, put my brain on full autopilot and just start drawing in details. You know, maybe the inside of this is actually round and it's like a rifle barrel, so it's like a bit square on the outside, but the internals are actually round. I don't know if that would make sense, but that could be cool.
So you can see why I split up the tread, seg tread segments, because this would be incredibly hard to just guess at in Photoshop um, where all these intersections are happening. But because I did it in 3D, I can get all of these to line up perfectly the first time, which is not generally how it would work. Like there would be a lot of trial and error, and it would take a long time. But I thought ahead and I saved myself some work. Cintiq HD 13, so I've got a little tablet right in front of my face that I'm drawing directly on top of, and then I've got my keyboard next to me, um, and then my monitor screen behind that, so I've got two screens going at once. I think it's the most natural way to draw, is like if you can get a tablet that you can actually see, but it's not a, um, it's not a requirement by any means. You can get by just fine using one of the Wacoms that um, you just have to like track what it's doing on your main monitor. It just kind of depends on what your preference is. Uh, I don't know if I like that tread. I might come back to that, but I'm just trying to put some of it in there. Okay, so for this, I'm glad I kicked that surface out because everything makes sense technically here. But now I'm going to start building in little extra pieces. Again, you can see just how easy it is. Like I've got all these cylinders in here, and generally, like these round shapes are the hardest ones to do accurately if you're just drawing them from scratch. So it's really helpful to have all this stuff done in 3D ahead of time. Normally, it would take a little bit more time, but because I've kind of like given myself a, a hard stop here, I put as much as I could in with the time that I had. You know, it 
Megan, it's kind of like what I was saying before. It's better to have something finished rather than have it perfect, I think. I think I will try to go into like 8.15 because I just want to get this sketched in enough that it looks like I spent my time wisely.
Um, so we're just about getting ready to wrap up in the next like five or ten minutes. Um, I'm going to leave this up, I think, on my page. So if anybody wants to go back through and watch what I was doing again, um, go for it. But I will also try to start pre-recording things so I can like I can do the work up front, and then you can like check it out later, like at your own leisure, and um, I can dub over the top of it so I can speed up the process and actually get more done and hopefully explain more of like kind of my thought process and the things that I'm thinking in the moment because um, I think the quality will be a little bit higher if I'm able to do it that way just because it's tough to design and talk as I said before. And so if I can isolate those two things happening um, and talk about it after I've already done it, I think that would be good. Um, so just feel free to check back. Um, if you guys are subscribed to my channel, you should get just updates on it. But um, if you don't feel like doing that, just check back in like a week or so, and hopefully I'll have some new ones up. Um, Michael, I don't know if you're still on here, but um, if you want me to start keeping these up for like the, uh, the workshops, it's also something I'd be open to doing. Um, obviously, with your sign-off, of course, but I'll send you an email about it later. here where the um, this wing section is coming into the body because I don't want it to just be plastered down there.
think, I don't know, this part is a really complicated part of the design, and I'm looking at more of it than I expected to from the front view, and that's why I'm kind of like struggling to fill in a piece here, because it's pretty significant to how the vehicle works, and I kind of left myself a big fat blank page. I'll look at my reference real quick, let's see what I got here. Hmm. Maybe I'll just add like some extra reinforcement parts because this is like where a lot of the power goes into the rear tread. So it's gonna have extra reinforcements. model, I get a pretty decent line drawing left over, um, and that took me, I don't know, I started at 7, 740, 750, this is maybe 20 or 30 minutes of a line drawing, and it looks, I don't know, pretty good, I think. So, I'm going to be doing some more of this stuff, um, like I said, I will try to draw them ahead of time, so I can condense all of this down into maybe half an hour and talk through all the things I'm thinking about, but... Uh, yeah, thanks for stopping by for a little bit, and uh, I hope you guys have a good rest of your weekend, and uh, I will see you next time. Thanks.